say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Waiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen. We're the farmers, this is our kitchen. That's right. This is not a set. Really? A lot of people say, well, where is that? Where do y'all do, do the cooking at? And uh, this is our kitchen. It really is. And what do we have here? Wings. Now, we did a show. We talked about wings, buffalo wings, and how they came about mm -hmm. in Buffalo, New York, of all places. But I'd heard there's a place called the Anchor Inn. And there's a lady there who made these little pieces of chicken that a lot of people consider junk. Look at the price on them in the store now. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like brisket. It used to be junk, mm -hmm. but not anymore. So what are you going to do? with these chicken wings, especially now that there's something going on. What's going on right now? A lot of ball games. A lot of ball games. I mean, football, basketball, basketball. everybody wants snacks. So we're gonna yeah. concentrate on this show. It's nothing but snacks. Good stuff. So we're gonna start some wings. And we don't use the air fryer very often, but I do think it makes great wings, yes. don't you? And you can just let them cook and do other things. Yeah. So we're gonna start with a little olive oil. I'm just gonna brush these real good so they have a little sticky surface. And if you see us okay. using oil, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to be olive oil. I'm just going to put enough salt, and this is kosher salt that we're using here. Mm -hmm. That's all they need. They're delicious. Salt and That's pepper. That's all they need, a little salt and old pepper. Now, depending on what you're doing, if you're going to, you know, make something really exotic, I guess, you know, something that's got a lot of heat in it. Nikki likes a lot of heat. Mm-hmm. And you're... Let's put red pepper flakes all over them. You want Then it? you can eat them alone. You want You it? can eat them all by yourself that way. I kind of hold off on the heat Thank Nikki you. because she doesn't like as much heat no, as I don't. So we'll turn these over. On the other side, Nikki has expertly cut these wings up mm -hmm. through their little joints and got them all prepared for consumption. It just amazes me. I mean, you could get chicken wings for nothing. And now they're right up there with everything else. They're more expensive else. than the rest I, of the cuts. They are. I mean, these it are, can be. everybody likes their wings. So now, uh, most of your air fryer, they have an air fryer setting. They have an air roaster setting. Some of them have dehydrators on them. Ours did. I just noticed that a minute ago. So you're going to be dehydrating. We have mm. a dehydrator. We do, somewhere. Okay, so a little More salt, salt. pepper. And kosher salt, I just use, I don't use for any other reason that I like the consistency of it. Got to have pepper. Got to have some pepper. <laughs> you know, funny thing about pepper. Are you done? The other day I was looking through the cabinet and I was trying to find my pepper. Uh-huh. Guess what? It's all gone. Gone. Mm. Could find no pepper anywhere. Wow. Now, how does that happen? We never, ever locked the doors until here recently. I found tracks in the snow. Really? With boots that had pepper all over them. Really? Yes. So I uh, called the police. Okay. They let us know that the pepper bandit Found is them. on the loose again. Really? He escaped from pepper prison. Okay. Once again, I want to show you a picture. Nothing major this time. Just take a look. If you're cooking and the smell of peppers wafting through the window mm -hmm. and you see this face, he looks innocent, yeah. he looks nice, and he's probably not a bad guy. Right. He's just got pepper problems. Yes, he does. Keep an eye out. That's all we got left. For this guy. Yeah, That's look at this. One That's it, I, I had 84 pounds. Yes, you did. That's all I got. <laughs> Keep an eye out. This guy's dangerous. All right, these go popping in the air fryer. The other day we were doing a live video. That's so much fun. It is. And we were talking about um, some upcoming things we had going on. And somebody says, would you please make an oatmeal cake? Mm -hmm. And in the back of my head, I remembered, I think it was mom that made an oatmeal cake. Anything oatmeal, I'm in. Yeah. And so we tried to find this recipe and you made it. And it was like you ate a the whole missing cake. part of my life. All right. I just want to say that I had forgotten 
the last part of the recipe, mm -hmm. the sugar, the brown sugar and everything in the top. You of that, broil it on the you top. You broil it, all the sugar in the mm -hmm. top, it caramelizes it's into delicious. this magic, wonderful thing. So, when you have any friends over for a ball game mm -hmm. and you want to make them a cake, not at my house because I'm going to eat it all, but it, maybe at your house you'll share. You won't share. It's amazing. So how do we get this thing started? All right. You notice I have water going here. I did notice I that. I have some water boiling. And what I need, what we're going to do is start off half a cup of oatmeal. Gotcha. And those are just regular. That's not instant regular, but you could use instant if you want. I need three quarters of a cup of water. This is pretty hot. Mm. I know it's hot. All right. How much water? Three quarters of a cup. Three quarters of a cup. boiling water. It's got to be boiling. It's got to be boiling. We're going to put that in, and I'm going to put a teaspoon of vanilla in this. And we're going to set this aside for a minute while we make our cake. And we're just going to mix this up. We're making you a bowl of oatmeal. I need you that. Know? I'm not scared. And let's just set this aside now while we go with the rest of our ingredients. As our wings are cooking in our air fryer behind us, we're starting to smell them. I can smell those. Everybody's is different. This one cooks at about 380. Yeah. So keep an eye on them. Make sure if they start to brown, you can turn them over. Right. When they get the desired crispiness and brown That's right. nature to the skin, they're ready to be good. And we're going to make something we kind of made in the past, but we jazzed it up a bit. I'm excited about that. Okay, we're going to set our oatmeal aside, right. give it 10, some people 20 minutes. It can just sit there. So you can make that early, it good. let it sit. All right, we're going to start with lard. And I have got a quarter cup of lard. Now, here's the deal. Some people say, well, I don't use lard. What else could you use, Mrs. Farmer? You could use butter. You could use shortening. But I have to use lard. So I have a quarter cup, and I've let it sit out so you can see it's kind of loose. That's, I like it better that's like that. That's our lard that we Yes, rendered. it is. Our lard. Now I have a lot of sugar. Three quarters of a cup of white sugar. All right. And we have three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. That's where it's at. That's right. It's the brown sugar. And I don't got the big mixer out tonight because we're just going to mix a little, and we're going to fold in the flour later. So I'm just going to mix this with my little hand. Right. Kind of just mix the sugars with the lard here a little bit. I'm going to add one egg. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, I know what's going on here. Yummy. I don't like it. Now we've let the oatmeal sit. Usually you can let it sit. You want to let it sit at least 10 minutes to 20 mm. minutes because we'll see how it's kind of gotten a little bit thicker here. And we're going to go ahead and add our oatmeal. Now we're going to mix this in. Mm. See how it's still kind of runny? Yeah, but it looks magic. And we're going to add about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And I'm just going to add it to the flour. Three quarters of a cup of self-rising flour. A little bit of salt. Let's do about a quarter to a half of the salt, too. So I'm going to kind of just fold this in so we don't bang it all up. Oh, I can already smell that. Doesn't it smell delicious? Like an oatmeal cookie? Mm, mm, mm. Now, I already have grease and flour to pan, if you grab that for me. It's a nine by nine. All right. We're making a small one because you could double this. But it's I, just my size that's right. to eat the whole thing. You can have it all yourself. And we're going to set the oven at 350. I'm just going to keep mixing this with the spatula until it looks good. Looks pretty good to me. What do you think? Good to me. All right. We're going to pour this in. and we'll straighten it up for you. We've got the oven set at 350 right now. And we're going to let this go 30 to 35 minutes. And you know what? It's kind of fun when we do something live like that and people come on and, and kind of Remind you of something that you haven't done in a long time? That, w that was a challenge, and we did. We have so many old cookbooks of our mothers and grandmothers. I always find something in there. You know what? When you've lived as long as we have, I'm going to be 85 Thursday. You look You're good. You're going to be 97. I look really good. Next Friday. That's right. So when you have lived this long, you kind of remember there's not too much things that we haven't eaten as we That's travel true. around the world and all over the United States. But this is, I'm so glad somebody mentioned this. Yes. Because I need to gain another seven or eight pounds. <laughs> good idea. All right, where are we at? All right, well, as soon as the oven heats up, we're going to throw it in. Uh, before you do that, you want to check the wings yes, to see sir, where please. they're at? So with these wings, we've tested it over time, and we do 15 minutes on one side, mm -hmm. 15 minutes on the other, and you might have to flip it over just one more time to get it right, and we check the temperature to make sure it's at least 160. Usually it's around 170, 175. Oh, my. I'm excited. Okay, you got to put your cake in. Yes, right. It just hit 350. You get right. the oven for me? All right. And we're going to let this go 35 minutes. Oh, you don't know how excited I am about that cake. Now the wings look beautiful. I took the biggest, thickest one out, and it came right in at 170, which is beautiful. over a little bit, but it's perfect. Just look at the golden brown yeah. beauty. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, Those are just beautiful. Look. Oh, just look. And who doesn't like chicken wings? Everybody loves chicken wings. I don't know if I know anybody that doesn't. 
I'll bet you there's somebody out there that <laughs> so will tell us like that them? they don't. That's okay. Oh, yeah, we'll eat theirs. Yes, please. I'll eat their share. Mail their wings to our house when, they're, right. when they're processing their chickens. We'll give you our post yeah, office yeah. box. Yeah, good idea. You're smart. And just put them in there. Or just send us the whole chicken. We don't care. Look at those. Wow. Those are perfection. Those are Who beautiful. Who says those uh, air fryers aren't good for something? They're good for wings. They, they really are. They are really good for wings. Now look at that golden brown beauty. We're going to wow. pop them in the oven just to keep warm. But look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Don't you just want to eat them right now? I do. All right, let me show you what I'm doing. I always, always put a thermometer on any kind of tabletop. Yeah. Why do I do that? Because it's always wrong on the temperature. It is always wrong. Yeah. If this says 280, I can guarantee you this is going to be 320 900. or yeah, 85,000 <laughs> degrees. So I always have this on here because I think it gives a way better representation oh, yes. of the actual temperature. Yes. So you can hear that that's heating up. Again, this is olive oil. So what are we doing? We've got some all natural, grass fed, no nitrate hot dogs. Uncured? Uncured. Perfect. Now, when anything says uncured, you gotta know that there's some kind of cure in there. Usually it's celery seed or something yeah. like that. So they do have some cure in. We don't eat a lot of hot dogs, but every now and then, you, gotta have you one. just gotta have one. That's when right. we're watching the Reds play, gotta have a lot of hot dogs. You gotta have hot dogs. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get this oil heated up. Now, generally, Whatever I'm doing, I don't get it much above 280 mm -hmm. and I let it go a little bit longer if I'm frying chicken, just like grandma used to do. Right. Remember in her electric skillet that sat oh, on yeah. the counter? Yeah. That wasn't a rapid boil, that was just a slow mm -hmm. and it was torture because you smelled it for yeah, like an cooking. hour. But it was kind of fun because you were looking forward to it. Oh, and you smell. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyhow, I remember mom's, um, I'm trying to think of what color her electric skillet was. It might have been that really ugly. 70s, remember the 70s yeah. yellow that yes. the, the refrigerators were? It matched your, yeah, appliances. Oh, so That's, ugly. Those are beautiful. It's kind of coming back. Mid-century yeah. stuff is That's coming right. back. All right, for this recipe, you're going to need three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour, one quarter of a cup cornstarch. You're going to need yellow cornmeal. You're going to need a cup of that, half a teaspoon of baking soda. You're going to need some sugar. And that's up to you. You can use a tablespoon. You can use up to three or four tablespoons. We're going to use a little bit of salt to taste, some black pepper. And we're also going to have some buttermilk, about a cup of that, and some eggs. Got to have a little salty taste going there. I'm going to put a little garlic in here as well. You can probably put about anything you want in there, can't you? You can put anything you want in here. Some people like some heat. As long as you got some sugar. For the most part, when you go to the fair and have a corn dog, it's sweet. Yeah. Gotcha. It's not southern corn cake on the outside. So now let's take the wet and put it with the dry. Okay. Now you want your consistency to be enough that when you dip your hot dog into the solution, it adheres to it easily. You don't want it real slurry-ish because you want it to hang on the hot dog. You know that oil popping? Mm-hmm. It's wanting a hot dog. It's wanting a hot dog. All right, so what we want to do now, you don't have to do this, but you find you something cylindrical. Where you, you can. Pour. This works, our little canning thing. Are right, you there. See what happens. Ooh. All right, if you'll hold this, we obviously want to get our little hot dog centered here. Oh, we're at the fair. That's right, I'm excited. So now my oil is about right where it needs to be. Now see how, see how that is, it's not pouring off of there. You have... Perfect, look at that. Just the right temperature. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hang on to this and I'm gonna put it in here and turn it around a few times and let that get to cooking before I let it rest in there. And this is only gonna go about five or six minutes. That looks good. Can I go ahead and pull the cake and just set it aside? Yes, we got all kinds of stuff going on here. See, once that gets going. It's looking good. Once that starts to cooking, you just kind of turn it ever so gently every now and then. And then we'll get two or three going. Okay, look at that. Perfect. And again, I'm gonna stick it in here and let it get going. You do have to be careful with them and take your careful. time. Yeah, turn them at first, put them in hot enough oil that it can go ahead and get, the, get them right. started and just gradually turn them. Okay, look what we've got there. Those look great. 
Those look really good. Corn dogs. Now I have to admit, we haven't made them. Not exactly like that, but look. They're mm -hmm. beautiful. They're beautiful. So here's what we've got. You remember us making our, oh. we made our own buffalo sauce? You know what? Depending on what kind of hot sauce that you use, it could be different colors, different tastes. This is mm -hmm. a new one that we tried that I really, really, really like. These are for you. These are super These are hot. for me. Yes. And I know what you, you like. So look at there. Tell me that doesn't look like something wonderful. Now remember a couple wonderful. weeks ago when we did cauliflower like this? I do. That's delicious too. You can do that. This is cauliflower. For those of you that might like to try this, remember this for the ball games. For those of you who like cauliflower. All right, so now we have our wonderful, beautiful Asian wings. That's what I like. In these we have orange marmalade, brown sugar. We have a peanut sauce that's got just a little bit of heat in it. And we have some sesame oil. We have a little bit of garlic. Take this all, mix it up, cook it down, and what do you got? Now, to make those pretty, take some toasted sesame seeds. Perfect. And look what we've got. Wow. Would you look at that spread? This looks amazing. And uh, we didn't go out and buy these. You saw us make them right here in our kitchen. Yes, right. I want you to try corn dog. I can't wait to try corn dog. Yeah, I'll grab one, I'll grab one too. Yeah, what do you like, ketchup or mustard? I like it both. I'm gonna start with ketchup. Because we, we can oh. double dip, it's us. You know, when I was a kid, at some point I made the transition. I used to like ketchup on a hot dog. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't anymore, and it was all mustard. I don't know what happened. That is delicious. Perfect sweetness, you did such a good job. <laughs> oh, I could just sit and eat these all night. Oh long. my. Where are the grandkids? This is not. This There's is a not. trick here, you can slide mm. that up. Mmm. Mmm. So you don't poke your tonsils. Okay. Oh my. That's delicious. It's so sweet, and your breading's amazing. You did really Isn't that good. Fun? You did good. Oh, I want to try Those it. are yours. These you, are mine. You love those. I put extra sauce in there for you. Can I use the ranch? You can use whatever you want. It's all you, baby. Oh, wow. This looks so good. These are always good. Look at that. Homemade ranch. Homemade. By golly, mm. buffalo sauce. Better than you can get anywhere. Any restaurant like this. Mmm. 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 So now, obviously, we made enough for us. Mm -hmm. If you want to, you got six people, eight people. We just keep increasing... Yeah the number of teaspoons and tablespoons right. and cups in your recipes and you'll be good. Now, we need something kind of off to the side where you can put a big scoop and really feed people That's something right. hearty that you can a crock pot Let or you cook can do all a Dutch yeah. Exactly. So people call these cowboy beans, calico mm -hmm. beans. There's all kinds of different things right. like this. Grandma puts hamburger in oh, it. You yeah. can do so many different things. But here's a version that we did outside. Mm -hmm. You can very easily do this in your crock pot as well. Yummy yum. Cowboy beans, everybody has their own version. This is one that we really, 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 really like. So we're gonna make a quick and easy version. This is a meal in itself if you choose for it to be. Yeah, it is. But we're hungry. So we're gonna have all kinds of stuff tonight. So I'm moving over to the fire, so I'm gonna be standing up and cooking for a while, and I'll have oh, you yeah. hand me stuff if you will. I will. Okay, you can do as much meat as you want to in this. I prefer it a little heavy on the meat. So we're gonna go eight pieces of bacon to start with. Here's our eight pieces of bacon. What are we gonna do with that bacon grease? Oh, I don't know. I think we'll leave it in there. Now my bacon is browning up nicely. That looks lovely. Now that seems like a lot of bacon fat, but here's the deal. That's uncured bacon, so I'm not worried about anything in it. Then we're gonna come back with some onions. That's just a medium-sized yellow sweet onion. Also, our, our beef, which we raised ourselves, was very, very lean. It, it was grass-fed. And so there's hardly any fat in that. Now, I like cooking over a good hot fire like this. You really gotta watch it, because everything gets done quick. This is a really, really, really hot fire. All right, it's time for some burger. Let's put half of that in. And a pound of hamburger. Now, look at that beef. Look how lean it is. It almost looks like elk. So bacon, onions, and beef. You know, there's all kinds of cowboy beans out there, and I've tried them a million different ways, but you know who makes them almost just like this? Who? Your mother. That's right, Grandma. It's the Grandma's beans. Give credit where credit's due. That's right. And she puts them in the crock pot for the day. Yeah, you can and do she that. She does it and takes it. That's a good uh, church lady dinner. We're gonna go a cup of brown sugar, a cup of ketchup. So now the good thing about this is all the stuff that takes a long time to cook is just about cooked up. 
right, let's go ahead and put our smoked seasoning in, although we're going to have some natural as well. A little bit of vinegar, a little bit of tart. Let's go with our beans. So here's about three cups. You can use any kind of beans you want. Here's about three cups pork and beans. Here's just about a cup and a half kidney beans, however many you want. And my favorite, butter beans. And that's also about a cup. So now you can see we're on a high heat situation. So I'm gonna move it up just a little bit and let it continue to cook. Put a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. All right, you can see we got a nice big boil rolling. We're gonna back it off a little bit. Get it away from the fire. That's how we turn our burner down. Now I can move that back and forth and I'll keep an eye on that. Now we're gonna cook that about 40, 45 minutes and that'll be plenty good to go. The beans are done. If you get your beans out of a can, you're way ahead of the game. Oh yeah. A couple of hours in the crock pot, three hours and you're good to go. Keep them warm. So, a lot of fun stuff, a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, one more thing we need is cake. Oatmeal cake That's right. at that. Let's get this out of the way. We'll eat a little bit of this and then we're going to show you the oatmeal cake. I knew butter was involved. You did. So what do you do to make this wonderful topping that just, just makes it perfect? It does. And actually, we, the cake has sat a while. Now, we could have iced it right away, but we ate so many things. I have three tablespoons of butter in here. Okay. This is half a cup of brown sugar. Mm. And? Quarter cup of whipping cream, heavy whipping oh, cream. Oh, yeah. And we're just going to get let this all melt. And when it's melted, I have over here a half a cup of coconut and a quarter cup of pecans. When I think about German chocolate cake, I think about that icing. It's very similar to this, but I actually like this better because yeah. I love the oatmeal stuff so well. You do. All right. Oh, That's man. melted. Half a cup of coconut. Chopped up some pecans. That's a quarter cup. We're going to mix this up. We're going to put this on top of the cake. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. And we're going to, I have the broiler going on high. I just noticed that. I was yes. checking that out. We're going to broil this for maybe two or three minutes. We're going to watch it because when it bubbles, it's going to harden it up and we're going to take it right off. I am so glad mm. the viewer mentioned to us oatmeal cake. When I was a kid, oh, how I loved this. Oh, this is so wonderful. We're just going to spread it on here. <sighs> it's yummy. I just can't explain to you. I'm sure folks out there have had oatmeal cake. When you talk to people, everybody says, everybody says their grandma made it. But when you when you take the top and you caramelize this this brown sugar and this butter mm -hmm. and and the coconut. You getting excited? The coconut has a consistency of the oatmeal down below. So you have this you have this the texture and the pecans and the brown sugar and the butter and I'm gonna cry. You are. Okay, it's let's so let's finish it then. Oh, and you know what's please. so good? Because usually you have to let it sit after you let it broil for a while, but I have another one. So we're and it's already cool so you can eat it. I can you ready? Eat it. I can eat it. Now I'm gonna watch this careful because we don't want it to burn. So it's just a couple minutes. Yes. Take Would your you bite. look? And the consistency, you, you know, of this particular cake and all the gooey goodness. Mm. Oh my word. That's sweet. You probably love it, don't you? Wow. If the Marine Corps had not taught me discipline, I would destroy both of these cakes right here in front of everybody. You did the one by itself the other day, so. Oh, all my this is, Okay. Look at this. I just want you to talk, I want to talk about consistency. <laughs> it's kind of like that apple cake. It is. That's your grandmother. Oh, it's just so precious. Eat away. Just keep eating. Delish. Delish. Is that your new favorite cake? Maybe? For now, for mm. today. I think it I think it is. Is it your new favorite? It may okay. have taken over. You okay. know how I like oatmeal cookies. So Ms. Farmer, say you're out buying groceries. Right. And somebody walk up to you and say, Mrs. Farmer, we saw the recipe mm -hmm. that you did on the show last week. How in the world would we find your recipes? What would you tell them? I tell them TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. And if they want to share recipes with us and share experiences that they've traveled around this great nation mm -hmm. and tried different things and you want to talk about it, we have a Facebook page, but it's extremely difficult to get on there. How do you get on there? It is difficult. You hit like. Oh, wow. That's yes, not that difficult. it's very difficult. So I'm just, I'm, I'm just looking at all this colorful, wonderful, good food, and I'm thinking... You're going to sit in front of the TV and I'm going to bring it all to you, right? I like the sound of it, but yes. I've got to clean this kitchen up. Uh-huh, whatever. It is a mess. Yes, you do. It is a mess, but uh -huh. it's also all about good times, good friends, and really good eats. 
I am going to gain five pounds tonight. I'm going back to the Look corn at this. dog. I'm going for the cake. We have been catering for a lot of years, and I wanted everything to have a specific taste. Therefore, I had to come up with my own products. Right. A dry rub, chow chow, and our barbecue sauce are something that we use in all our catering gigs. I developed this barbecue sauce that is not the th really thick, syrupy stuff that you get. This is, has more of a natural, it's got some pepper and onion flavor, and you can actually see the particulates in there. You know, a lot of people are asking what we use our dry rub on. Now, obviously, pork and chicken are two of the more common things. Also, we've been using on our corn on the cob with butter. That is I'm telling you, this That's stuff wonderful. with potatoes is fantastic. So 40 years in the making, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Dry Rub. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by Emerson Farms Country Store. Something for every member of the family. Ephraim McDowell Medical Center in Danville, Kentucky. Gulf Coast Connection. Seafood straight from the Gulf to you. The Spine Center of Central Kentucky. Wilderness Road Hospitality, Stanford, Kentucky. Visit Frankfurt, Kentucky's spirited capital city.